The Christmas Crinkle is my favorite Christmas cookie. Why? It's a perfect blend of chewy and chocolatey, not to mention they look pretty cool. They store really well, and finally, they just remind me of my family who I'll be missing on Christmas this year. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cookie nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So my family and I decided not to travel home for Christmas this year due to COVID since a number of us would be coming from different states and things like that. So it's obviously a bummer not being able to see them. So to kind of get myself in the Christmas mood, I decided to call up my mom and get the recipe so I could share with all of you our family favorite Christmas cookie, the Christmas Crinkle. The Christmas Crinkle is a chocolate cookie dough that is rolled, then coated in confectioner sugar before baking. Then when they cook, they puff and crinkle. Texture-wise, I would akin it to a slightly firmer brownie type cookie, and they are killer fresh, but also keep really well at room temperature, and I love snacking on them straight from the freezer. And for a special treat, I sometimes make an ice cream sandwich out of them. More on that and the recipe in just a second, but first, I wanted to call up my mom to see how she started making this recipe. Yeah, um, I, it's, it's interesting because, you know, so many of our cookie and holiday foods come from family that are passed down but this is one that I found on my own just by flipping through the newspaper when we were first married and we were living in Pittsburgh like we were married in 1990 and it might have been that exact year and I saw this uh this little clipping and you know this woman Marianne Fernanding or something um said that it was a great recipe and that people always requested it and I just thought I'd try something new and it is exactly true because people love this cookie and yeah. I also don't want to make it any other time of year because I feel like it wouldn't be the same so we literally don't, you know, we don't make it yeah. until Christmas because then it's, it's special, it's a holiday cookie. To start, we're going to chop one whole stick of butter into even sized slices. Now we need softened butter, but more specifically 60 degree butter. The baking whiz Stella Park tells me that the butter loses its ability to expand and stretch above 68 degrees during creaming, so 60 degrees is a good place to start, and chopping it up like this from the fridge helps the butter soften quickly while we get our other ingredients, and I also put mine in the sunshine too. Meanwhile, set a large bowl over a scale and added 400 grams of sugar. Yeah, it's a lot of sugar. Buddy the Elf would like these cookies. You like sugar, huh? Is there sugar in syrup? Yes. Then yes! Now that our butter is right around 60 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to toss it in and attempt to cream this by hand. Now, this is way easier if you do have an electric mixer, but I am going by hand and it is quite the workout. Now, creaming is a process that whips air into the butter and sugar, giving our cookie dough more volume. And I did a quick experiment of two small batches, one where I creamed the butter and sugar first, and one where I just loosely mixed them together by hand before adding all the other ingredients. And when I took out two 20 gram pieces of dough, it is hard to tell on camera, but in person, the one that was creamed had more volume. Then once baked, both are great cookies, don't get me wrong, but the cream one feels a touch lighter and the other one is denser, which makes sense. And if you want a more in-depth read, just check out this article by Stella Parks. Now back at the bowl, I like to add the vanilla to get some liquid in to help the creaming process. And then after about 10 to 12 minutes of pretty hefty stirring, I thought this was good enough, so I cracked in the three eggs and mixed the dough together. Once the egg, sugar, and butter are completely combined, it's time for the chocolate. Lay out 113 grams of unsweetened chocolate on a plate and melt it in the microwave. Now I like using a plate instead of a bowl so the chocolate melts evenly and it's easy to keep an eye on it if it starts to burn. You're just gonna pour the melted chocolate into the bowl and then fold it into the dough with a spatula. Once the chocolate has been incorporated, you're gonna follow that with 275 grams of all-purpose flour, eight grams of baking powder, and three grams of salt, and mix the dough until cohesive. Make sure you are scraping the bowl so the dough is uniform throughout. Now the next part is the most important. We aren't going to bake these right away, but instead we're going to refrigerate them for at least one hour. 
The dough right now isn't able to be rolled into a ball and would spread apart really fast if baked. In fact, if the dough is not completely cooled, this is what happens when it is baked. You can see that the one on the left has spread out much further and thus loses some height in the cookie. Now, not necessarily a bad thing, but I generally want them to be a little bit higher in height. Once ready to bake, preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and pull the cookie dough out of the fridge. Now you're gonna set a bowl or a dish with about 50 grams of confectioner sugar to your left, and then using a scale, scoop the cookies into roughly 20 gram pieces, and then roll those pieces in between your hands to form a sphere. Now you can absolutely make this into larger cookies if you do want to. Here's an example of 50 gram, 40 gram, and 20 gram pieces. Back of the dough, rolling the cookies in a circle like this helps them have a repeatable structure compared to just dropping them when they flatten in the oven. And then you're gonna toss each rolled cookie into the confectioner's sugar and make sure it's completely covered. Don't skimp here. I like to roll a bunch of ones, toss them in the confectioner's sugar, and then go back for more. Once those are all done, you're gonna place a piece of parchment paper over a baking sheet and shake the cookies lightly before evenly spacing them out. And you're just gonna repeat this process for the remaining cookies. And if you are cooking multiple batches, this is the perfect time to watch a Christmas movie. For me, I got my yearly watch of Elf in. And when the cookies are evenly spaced on the baking sheet and ready to bake, we're just gonna slide them in the oven for 10 to 13 minutes. Now, a critical part of baking is finding out what works for your oven because they can go from perfect to burnt really fast. To find out what works for you, use a thermometer. Sources such as the Thermalworks blog and Stella Parks say 175 to 185 degrees is the ideal spot for chocolate chip cookies, and it's what I aim for these as well. And I like to check the temperature after about 10 minutes and then pull them if they're done at 175 to 185 and then I can let them cool right on the baking sheet. Now at this point the cookies are still quite loose, but they will firm up a little bit through carryover cooking. Once cooled, you can move them to a rack or your favorite container, and what's fun about these is seeing all the different crinkles. It seems like each batch is a little unique and the chocolatey chewy texture is killer and dare I say better than a chocolate chip cookie when it comes to dunking them in milk. Now these store great in a container, but if you do make a bunch of them, just pop them in a container in the freezer. And lastly, if you're looking for something extra indulgent, try getting some mint chocolate chip ice cream, adding a spoonful to a cookie, and topping it with another. I started doing this last year and it's one of my favorite desserts now. Happy holidays, y'all.